Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Healing for all. We, you know, this, sometimes you can cover the same things over and over again because different people here, different people on the internet, uh, they need to hear certain things. And, um, you know, the certain subjects of the Bible, you just, you, there's no way about not teaching them over and over again. Teach them exactly, the, uh, try to teach them the same, they come out different, but teaching them on the same lines, same scriptures, same points. But uh, God, God can take those same scriptures and those same points and the same lines and make them different depending on who's listening. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. I was teaching on the glory this morning and I, get, I got past, I got halfway through the first set of scriptures and was gone somewhere else. Surprise, surprise, right? <laughs> Psalm 103, verses 1 through 4 says, Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You need to underline that word if you haven't already in your Bible. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not his benefits. All right? Now, this is a benefit. Now, how many of you have ever worked for somebody who had benefits? You got the benefits because you worked the job. Amen? You qualified for the benefits because of your relationship with the job. All right? And see, because of our relationship with the Lord, we get benefits. I said we get benefits. Don't have to earn them. You get them because you're, you're part of the company. You ever gone to work with somebody and say, well, this, you know, uh, uh, you come to work for us and after your 30-day or 60-day or 90-day probationary period, uh, then you get two weeks vacation. You didn't earn the vacation. They're giving it to you. Amen. Now, some companies make you earn it. You know, you've got to work a year to get one week unpaid. You know, five years, get two weeks paid or something like that. Hallelujah. Now, listen to what the benefits are. Let's look at the first one. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. So we have here a list of benefits that come from our relationship with the Lord. One is you get forgiven of iniquities. You sin, God will forgive you. Amen? Of your iniquity. Thank God. I'm so glad he does. I'm not glad he ain't like people. Oh, my. If, you know, if you were in charge of heaven, we'd all be in hell. I like a self-aware person. Say, <laughs> yes, right. Amen. If I was running, I know people I would have put in hell already. Are you here? Aren't you glad I'm not running it? Aren't you glad the Lord is full of mercy? And loving kindnesses, amen? He's, he's, he ministers life. He, he's a blessing, glory to God. You know, so he forgiveth thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Now, I remember a number of years ago, I share this usually when I share this scripture, but I remember a number of years ago, well-known evangelist. Now, he had come out of a non-Pentecostal, non-charismatic background, and had kind of gotten over among the charismatics and Pentecostals, and was preaching, got on the, you know, the, you know TBN, was on TBN, and, uh, you know, TBN, primarily had Pentecostal type charismatic word of faith kind of guys. You know, there were some people that weren't, but you know, uh, they, you know, they, they had, that was their, their major forte. And this guy was on there. He was on there. They would, you know, Paul Crouch was hosting that night. And he's on there just to preach it. How that God forgives your iniquities. And he went on and on and on and on. I mean, he rammed, I mean, he ramped it up. Got the phone banks to going and everybody calling in, praise God. Got all these people saved and came back after about 15 minutes and sat down and looked over at Paul Crouch and said, well, you know, let's read the next, next one. It says, who healeth all thy diseases. And he said with the most serious face and the most serious statement, you know, Paul, all doesn't always mean all. Now, why does it mean all iniquities when he preached up to get the people saved part, and it doesn't mean all diseases when he preached about getting healed? Huh? What is it about that semicolon that absolutely erratic, erratically changed the meaning of all? Are you here? That's the question I like to ask is, how in the world did that semicolon change all to some? Are you here? 
Now, if it meant all in the first part, it meant all in the second part. Amen? I said, Amen. amen. Who redeems our life from destruction, crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, satisfies your mouth with good things. You know, so he says here, he redeems your, he, he forgives your iniquities and heals all your diseases. Now, well, I'm just be honest with you. If it means all iniquities, it means all diseases. If he forgives all your iniquities, then he heals all your diseases. And I mean, you know, he preaches, oh, he, he, he forgives the prostitute. He forgives the drug addict. He forgives the murderer. He forgives the homeless. All, I mean, it doesn't matter what you've done. He forgives all your iniquities. Well, then it doesn't matter if it's cancer. It doesn't matter if it's AIDS. It doesn't matter if it's leukemia. It doesn't matter if it's tuberculosis. He heals all your diseases. Amen? They're all part of the healing process of God. When Jesus took our sicknesses and was by his stripes we were healed, he carried everything. I said he carried everything. Even the new stuff that got invented since then. It's amazing how Satan keeps trying to, you know, keeps, keeps perverting things so sickness keeps per, uh, perpetuating from some different realm. But it's all the same thing. It's perversion of health. Healing belongs to us as a believer. Can you say amen? 3 John 2. Look over in 3 John 2. John says, Beloved, I wish, now the word wish should be really better translated pray, but you know, <clears throat> I desire above all things. What did he desire? That you may prosper, and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Now John tied this together here in the New Testament and said this, that the prosperity of your finances, the physical well-being of your body are tied to the prosperity of your soul. What does it mean by that? By the renewing of your mind, by you coming in understanding of God, knowing what God's will is. When you, when you have a soul prosperity, you'll be able to have help and, and financial prosperity. And notice that John said, above all things, above all things, I, I, I wish that you could prosper and be in health. Wow. Of all the things he could have said, John, the disciple who loved, who loved Jesus, who laid on Jesus' chest at the Last Supper, the one that Jesus said, what is it to you, Peter, if he, if he, if he stays here until I come back again, you know, the one that is called the, the apostle of love, he said, I pray above all things that you prosper and be in health. Well, if you don't have your health, you really don't have anything. You can't, you can't function, you can't, you can't accomplish the things you need to accomplish for God without your health. Amen. God wants you healthy. God wants your body well. Wants it healed. Wants it whole. Wants it sound. Can you say amen? amen? And so, of all the things that John could have prayed, I pray that, you know, you'll be humble. I pray above all things that you understand humility, that God crush you and grind you and pound you into the dirt until you have, you know, create, have a contrite and humble spirit. And he could have said all kinds of things, but he didn't. And if, if he said what the church world wanted him to say, it would be something along the line, beloved, I, 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 I wish above all things that you would get whatever God's trying to teach you through making you sick as a dog and putting all those diseases on you, that one of these days you'll figure it out and you'll be able to be able to say, give a testimony. Well, I finally figured out what the Lord was trying to teach me. Amen. And we get some messed up theology in the church. Did you know that? I said, did you know that? No, he, pro he, he, pro he, he prayed, he wished, he desired above all things that would prosper financially. It's not financial prosperity. How do you know when talking about soul prosper? He said, because he said, prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So he, he wouldn't say, I, I pray that you'll have soul prosperity even as your soul prospers. That's not what he said. He's talking about prosperity financially. He's talking about them make, having money. God wants you to be blessed financially. I said, God wants you to be blessed financially. He wants you to prosper financially. Hallelujah. Why? God's not stupid. God knows that it takes the people who have money in their hands to, to put into the work to get the job done. Well, God could do it without that. Well, why did he always ask the people to give? Why is it when it's time to restore the temple, they called the people and they brought all, why didn't God just zap it and make it all happen? Because that's not how God set it up. God has it set up where his people work with him. Amen. He blesses the fruit of their hand. Why? So he can establish his covenant in the earth, praise God. You know, Jesus bore our sicknesses at the same time he bore our sin. Now, I think this is important. I think it's important for the, because of this vein of thought. If Jesus, the, if the Father, if the Father thought it was so important 
that Jesus died for our sin, yet at the same time, he laid on him the sickness of all people. At the same time he was bearing our sin, then our physical well-being was in the mind and heart of the Father when Jesus went to the cross. It was imperative to the Father that the Son not only bear our spirit, the, the spiritual tainting of the fall of man and sin, but also carry the physical tainting sickness with him to the cross. Look with me, if you will, over into um, Isaiah chapter 53. Now, if you look, if you'll read the last part of Isaiah chapter 52, you'll find out for sure that the, the prophet Isaiah is making reference to Jesus. As a matter of fact, we'll go ahead and back up to 13 and 52. It says, Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many, as, as, as many were astonished at thee, his visage was marred more than any man, so his form more than the sons of men. Now, um, this literally means that Jesus didn't even look like a human being on the cross. After, after receiving 40, lash, 40 stripes save one, that's 39, with a Roman scourging, usually carried out by two to three Roman soldiers at the same time. Now, how many ever saw the passion of the Christ? I mean, it's, the, 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 the flogging scene is extremely accurate. They put real thick leather on the back of Mel Gibson, I mean, of, of Jim Caviezel's back, put real thick leather so that it wouldn't rip his skin, but some of those things actually went around and got underneath and, and, and cut him up underneath, just the wraparound, okay? And, um, but it, it's a very accurate depiction of a Roman scourging. We, it's not this old cowboy bullwhip thing. It was one inch tethers about, the, about this state, yay long, with bone and, and, and rock and clay and nails all in the ends of it. So when they hit you and drug it, it would just rip and shred the skin, Okay? So that's what the flogging, Jesus didn't go through a, a, you know, a, a cowboy whip. He went through a flogging of a Roman scourging, which was a brutal, which would kill people. Because it just ripped their flesh open. And, and, the, and, the bacteria, and the infections alone could kill them. Not much less the, uh, the shock of what the, the body went into. Okay? And, and, then, and then think about that. After that, they put him on the cross, and all the sin of humanity came on Jesus. Have you ever seen people who've lived a, a rough life of sin? I remember a few years ago, we, we were watching a documentary on one of the news networks, and they were, they were talking to, uh, to prostitutes who were drug addicts. And they got talking to this girl, and I'm telling you, her, her, whole, her entire being was emaciated. I mean, she was just almost like skin, you know, skin stretched over bone. Um, her, her, the, the, her face looked, oh, late 50s, early 60s minimum. Just, just. I mean, like walking skeleton, old. Woman was 28 years old. Sin just emaciates the body. You see people who live the rough life. You know, you kind of say, ladies, they've been road hard and put up wet. Kind of a horse term, you know, horse term. You know, road hard and put up wet. You can tell people who live rough lives. Then you get people who've lived and served God for years and years and years from early on, and how much younger they stay just because they served the Lord, because the life of God was in them. Think about all sin of all time, of all humanity laid on Jesus at one time. And about every, the, the, the most evil of sin, the most heinous sin, all of it, of all time, laid on him at the cross. What that would do to the physical body. Not only that, at that same time, every sickness and every disease known before, during, and after his was laid on him at the cross. There's enough deforming and, and, and uh, diseases that would have made his body just totally, you know. That's why he says here, as many were astonished at thee. His visage, that, how he looked, was so marred more than any man, and his form more than say, basically saying, uh, uh, say it literally or paraphrasing it, he didn't look like a man, like, more like a, uh, just meat hanging up there. That's why darkness had to come on the face of the earth. They couldn't have looked on him. They couldn't stand to look on him at that point. It, it, would, be, it would have been a, a, a horrible, horrible sight to have been able to actually see it in full light. That's what Jesus went through. That was just the beginning. That was what he went through just so he could get and carry your sin and your sickness to the cross. 
And then people come along and say, he didn't want us well. I'm thinking, you think what he went through to carry your sickness, and, you, and, and you're going to come along and say, it didn't mean anything, he really didn't, uh, you're not, you didn't get healed by his stripes? So shall he sprinkle many nations, for kings shall shut their mouths of him for that which hath not been told. Then they shall see, and that which they had not heard they shall consider. So we know this, he's talking about his servant, verse uh, 1 of the next chapter. Who hath believed that report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and out of the root of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness that we should desire him or see him. There is no beauty that we should desire, that we should desire him. That simply means Jesus wasn't, you know, like you know, the, the cover guy for GQ magazine. People were following after him because they were just thinking he was a hunk. There, was, there wasn't anything physically about him that made him, that people wanted to follow after him. He didn't have that look. You know, uh, now if you're preaching, they're always trying to get you to have the right look so people come follow after you because you got the look. You got the metro look. You wear skinny jeans and bedhead. Forget it. It ain't going to happen with this preacher. Number one, you don't want to see me in skinny jeans. And number two, I get natural bedhead. I get it and want to go look in the mirror and I do everything I can to get rid of it. Some people pay money to put gel in their hair so it looks like what I get. I try to get rid of it when I get up in the morning. And they, call, and they think it's cool to look like you just crawled out, of a, crawled out of a bed, you know, with your head all messed up. Dear Lord. No, it's not about having the right look, you know, and, and people uh, following you because you look cool and you're, you're handsome or you're metro or, you know, you're a hunk. You know, if you've got people following you because you're a hunk, you better get into a different business because you're in the wrong business. You're supposed to be representing the Lord, not trying to be beautiful, not trying to be sexy, not trying to have all the girls goo-goo-eyeing over you. You'll be in trouble. I said, you'll be in trouble. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Now, I don't have my other Bible because I changed Bibles, but I used to have notes in here about which one. The, one of these words is koile, and the other one's makab. I believe... I, I, I'm not sure. One of them is called, so Greece and, and sorrows. One means, now Greece really means sicknesses. And sorrows means pain. Surely he's born our sicknesses and carried our pains. Yet we did. Now, if you go to Strong's Concordance, the first, those translations are first translated Greek and sorrows. You go to Brown, Driver, and Briggs, and there's a sickness and, and pain. Okay? Uh, they don't even have the other different words in there that Strong's has. All right? And for the Hebrew words. Koile and Mechab. So really, it should be translated, he's, short, he's born our sicknesses and carried our pains. Yet we did esteem him, stricken, spitting of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now, see, so you'll read that to some people, and they'll come along and go, oh, that means the spiritual taint and the spiritual stain of sin. You've been healed from the the the, the uh, whatever, you know, you don't get healed of the, of sin. You get forgiven. Surely he hath, what? Forgetting all of his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. So the, 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 the uh, sickness is, is to see, people say sin is the spiritual sickness. No, sin is the state of man outside of God. And God, God, you're getting born again, and then after you get born again, if you commit a sin, he's faithful just to forgive you of your sin. Didn't say heal you of your sin, forgive you of your sin. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, we see here in the end of this verse, it says, and with his stripes we are healed. Well, we, you know, you go over the New Testament, 1 Peter 2. Verse uh, 21, for even whereunto you are called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin was neither uh, guile and found in his mouth, and him when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. When he committed himself to him that judges righteously. Who his own self by our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes ye were healed. Now this is obviously a reference to Isaiah 53, 5. 
by whose stripes ye were healed. He bore the iniquity of us all. So he's, uh, Paul is, is uh, Peter, I'm sorry, is taking that and making reference to that in the New Testament. And notice he changed something, though. In the Old Testament, in the prophet Isaiah, he says, by his stripes, we, we are healed. Peter says, we were healed. You see, the prophet was looking forward to a day that was to come. Peter's looking back to the day that has already come. Prophet's looking forward to a day that this is going to actually take place. Peter's looking back to the fact it's already taken place. So now healing has been procured. So people say, oh, you know, you go to a funeral. They got the ultimate healing. No, they died. Well, you know, they, they, they don't have any pain anymore. Yeah, because they don't even have their body anymore. Amen. What? No, they don't, have, they don't have their body. That body's in the ground. That, that, will turn, that, that will turn back to the dust of the ground. And until Jesus returns with, the, with, with the, uh, the, the departed saints, and those which are dead in Christ rise up from the ground and get their body, get their glorified bodies, and we which are alive remain shall be much changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye, and this mortal shall put on immortality, and this corruption shall put on incorruption in, the, in, the mo in, in that day. Amen? When you die, you don't get the ultimate healing. Because you didn't get healed. That body died. That went over big. See, we say things to try to comfort people, and we lie to them. Now, how's a lie going to comfort them? Now, as a matter of fact, Paul wrote to the church of Thessalonica and just said what I was quoting earlier. He said, you know, uh, that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the, trump, the uh, 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 sound of the, the trumpet. Amen. And they which are dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. And then he, what's he saying? And then he, and when he says all that, then he says this, wherefore comfort you one another with these words. He didn't say tell them they got the ultimate healing. Tell them that they're coming back one day to get their body. It's going to be a glorified body. We're all going to be fierce. We're still alive. We're going to get caught up and meet them in together in the air. Praise God. Didn't tell them to go lying to them. We ain't got no business lying to folk because it makes them feel better. As a matter of fact, Paul said the words that he said there in 1 Thessalonians, I believe, chapter 4, were words of comfort. Those were the words of comfort we're supposed to give people. Now, if, you know, you, you don't get the ultimate healing. If you die sick, you didn't get healed. You just left that body behind and went on to heaven. Praise God. I said, you just went on to heaven. Glory to God. Well, praise God, we get to go to heaven. Amen? I said, Gl thank glory to God, we get to go to heaven. No, it's not the ultimate healing. You know, God wants to be able to heal your body here. And so Peter says here, you know, by his stripes, we were healed looking back. And then, you know, again, you'll have people come along and go, well, you know, that's talking about the, the, the sickness of sin. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. Hallelujah. See, with the Bible. You know what? The best commentary on the Bible is the Bible. Yeah. Amen? And you don't, have, you don't have to have a Ph.D. to read that. You don't have to have, um, you know, um, are you here? Understand he, biblical language of Hebrew, Chaldean, Aramaic, and, and Greek. No. Nah, praise God, you can hit, get stuff out of the Holy Ghost. Well, Matthew chapter 8, looking down around verse, let's get down to verse 15, 16, somewhere in there. Uh, verse 14, when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. Now, all these people who go around saying Peter was the first pope and, and Catholic uh, priests can't have wives, Peter had a wife. Why do you know that? Because you can't have a mother-in-law without a wife. Hello. As a matter of fact, she, he saw his wife's mother laid sick of a fever. You can't have a wife's mother unless you have a wife. And he touched her hand, and she, the fever left her. She arose and ministered unto them. Now when evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. He cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah. Or that's, now that is the Greek form of Isaiah. Isaiah. The prophet himself say himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. Now, wow. We don't even have anybody, in that account, account we don't have anybody saying they got saved. He said the evil spirits were cast out and that all that were sick were healed. That it might fulfill Isaiah's prophecy, himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. Bear our sicknesses. Bear our sicknesses. Healed all that were sick. Sick. Didn't say sinful. Sick. Now the Bible's commentary on Matthew 53, 5 and 1 Peter 2, 24 is that by his stripes we are healed is in reference to sicknesses. 
Everybody say S. I. C. K. S. <laughs> it's for the sickness you have on thee. I is the Hebrew for Jesus, you see. <laughs> C is yes. He carries the anointing today. It just wasn't working. I just, I was trying. <laughs> I was trying. Hallelujah. I thought I'd put off a good one with the Jesus thigh thing there. <laughs> now, praise God. So Isaiah 53, 1 Peter 2, 24, those are references to physical diseases. Everyone say physical diseases. Amen. God did not give a salvation where you had to choose between getting spiritually ministered to or physically ministered to. You can have both of them. It wasn't an either or. It was all. It's a complete salvation. Now, you don't get your glorified body. You get the promise of it. Now, see, Ephesians says that we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of the purchased possession. That means that we get the glorified body when he returns. We don't get that, but he wants it well until he gets here. He said he wants it well until he gets here. You see, sickness is evil. Sickness is the offspring of his evil parent, sin. How, what do you mean by that? When man sinned in the Garden of Eden and his spirit became alienated from God and Satan became his spiritual father, then Satan perverted the body and how the body functions is worse. God designed the body so it wouldn't die. It was designed uh, every seven years, your whole body gets a new set of, of, of cells. But what they have found out is each of those seven-year cycles, they, uh, because of some, there's a gene that's messed up, <laughs> the sin gene, it, it ages it because when it comes back, it comes back uh, wrong. It didn't come back the way it's supposed to. But God originally designed it so your body replaces, replenishes itself every seven years to live forever. God designed man never to die. You know, the Bible, oh, well, I believe God. No, 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 the Bible says death is an enemy. I said, the Bible says death is an enemy. It's going to be the last enemy put underfoot. Why? Because it's the first enemy that entered in. And it's going to be the last one to go out. Hallelujah. But it's going to go out. Remember, it says this, when we're caught up in the air of the Lord, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen? Then we won't know sickness anymore. I said, we won't know any sickness in heaven. You won't need the whole armor of God in heaven. The devil won't be there. Remember, I first got saved. I mean, this back in 1970. I was listening to Copeland on the radio. I didn't know it was Copeland. And he's preaching about the armor of God. He said, these people who think that, you know, they, you know that the armor of God's for heaven, you're going to get up there and walk into heaven with all the clanging with all the armor on and going, where is the devil? He ain't here. Amen. So God did not make it an either or choice. You don't have to choose between being Forgiven of sin and being physically well, you, get, you can have both of them. Well, I don't believe that. Well, go to James chapter 5. James, the fifth chapter. Somebody say glory. glory. Now, we've already given you enough faith to get you healed. What do you mean you gave us enough faith? I gave you the word. We've given you the word. The word has in it faith. Faith is in the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The delivery system for faith is the word. I said, amen. amen. James chapter 5, verse 13. Is there any afflicted? Let him pray. Is there any married? Let him sing. Is there any sick among you? Now, we wouldn't even say that in the church today. Like Brother Hagin said, now yeah, you kind of go, the 80 or 90% of you that are sick, call. 80 or 90% of you that are sick, go ahead and call somebody. Back then, just if, if there, is there any sick among you? Well, do what? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save. Now, the word save here is sozo. And it means beyond, you know, just saving. It also means to heal, to make whole. So I, I just think King James translators just used the wrong word here. I, I mean, save is one of the translations, but it wasn't the right one for this passage. Okay? The prayer of faith shall heal the sick or make the sick whole. And listen to this. And the Lord shall raise them up. And if he's committed sins, they'll be, shall, they shall be forgiven so right there, see, God, God didn't make it an either-or proposition. Matter of fact, God makes it a whole package proposition. We'll come in faith. You can get healed and you can get forgiven. Oh, glory to God. Thank God we can get forgiven and get healed. Amen. And you don't have, you don't have to get forgiven to get healed. You can get healed and then get forgiven. 
Amen? Sometimes it's easier to get healed if you, get, if you forgive or get forgiven. But you know what? God, God, God can work in all kinds of ways. Amen? I said God can work in all kinds of ways. I've seen sick people get healed and then God save them. Now, you understand when I say when God saved them, we, we understand in, in strict theological terms of, of, of how things operated that Jesus bore, and, and everybody got saved when Jesus went to hell and came up and took his own blood and went into the mercy seat of God. God forgave all humanity, not willing that any should perish, but they all should come to the knowledge of the truth. And only the people who reject that have their name blotted out of the book of life. The Bible says they opened the books and said, whosoever's name was not blotted out. What's that mean? They were in there. Now, we used to sing that old song. I grew up Pentecostal. We grew up in this, we sing this song. There's a new name written down in glory, and this mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. Yes, there's a new name written down in glory, and this mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. I forgot the tune. I kind of lost the tune there. But, you know, well, I just got saved, so there's a new name in glory. Not really. Not really. Now, if somebody dies and goes to hell, you know, leaves this earth without Jesus, you know, there's a new name blotted out in glory. And it's theirs. Because that's really how it works. Yeah. But for the sake of, you know, people, you, people use terminology. They say, well, I got saved last night. Well, yeah, that's the day you accepted it and became a reality to you. But as far as God was concerned, he made that provision the day that Jesus was raised from the dead and took his blood to the mercy seat and sat down in his own right hand. All names were in the book at that time. It's just those who reject him and don't ever accept what he did for them that they get blotted out. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to get blotted out. Anybody want to get blotted out? So, and if he's committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. God has a plan to minister life to people, spirit, soul, and body. Your spirit gets instantly born again. Your soul gets renewed by the renewing of your mind, being transformed, being not conformed to this world, being transformed by the renewing of the mind. And the body can be healed and held in check until you leave the planet or until Jesus comes back. Somebody said one time, well, if you can't get sick, how are you going to die? Oh, yeah. Like they did the Old Testament. They called the kids in. They blessed them. They cursed them, depending on how they live, and threw their hands up, their feet up on the bed, and went home. Hello? You know? Called the family and said, I'm going home today, and go home. One minister came, got up in his pulpit on a Sunday morning, and a well-known, well-known minister, and, and said, started talking about how the ministry was. You know, this part of the ministry is paid for. This is paid for. Their missions outreaches and all their equipment for the missions outreaches were all paid for. And they said, I'll see you on the other side. And Ten days later, they were in heaven. I said, amen. I know, I know a minister. I, I knew his son. His son uh, went home early in life. But um, it was actually his Vicar Jameson's brother. And... Um, he passed it up in the New England states for a number of years. He called a pastor up down in that he knew down in the southern part of the states and said, I, I need for you to pray with me. He said, about what? He said, I want you to pray with me that I go home. And he was serious. He was ready to go. He said, what, what, how are you supposed to do it? Are you supposed to get sick now? He, he just wanted to pray and go home. So they talked about it a little while. He prayed and he went home. Went, went home blessed. You don't have to be sick to die. Paul said, I'm in a stretch between two. Whether to depart and be with the Lord, which is far better, or to, you know, to abide in the flesh, which is, and I'm going to paraphrase a little bit here, which is needful for you, or more profitable for you. And, and, and again, paraphrasing kind of after he said that, he said, but because it's needful for you, I'm going to stay a little bit longer. He said, I was, I'm going to struggle. I want to go home, but you need me. So I'm going to stay. Because you need me. Then later on, he writes back and says, you know, I've kept the faith. I finished my course. Henceforth, was laid up for me a, a, a crown. Glory to God. He finishes his course. One of our uh, Raymond people just passed away this, this week, uh, Brian McCullum. He graduated the year before I did, and he'd already served uh, uh, 20 years or so in the military. And um, he was a lieutenant colonel. And he, it, it, after he graduated, he became the pilot at Raymond. And a few years after that, he began to teach at Raymond. And taught for years and years and years and years. And they said recently, he'd just been telling people, you know, I've, I've done everything I need to do for the Lord. I'm ready to go home. And he went home. I said, I've done, I've done everything I'm supposed to do. I've done everything I'm supposed to do, so I'm going home. If we begin to understand how much we have to do with how we live 
it changed a lot of things. We could live well until it's time to go home. You don't have to get cancer to go home. You can just get at 88, 90 years old, 95, and say, well, guys, it's time for me to go. See you on the other side. Now, y'all go ahead and finish your course. I'm going. Amen. Remember Paul when he was preaching there in the book of Acts, and, um, you know, they came down to him, and, you know, and Agabus came down and so forth, and, and you know, the, the, by, the Holy Ghost says that the man whose hands are bound with this will go bound to Jerusalem. And Paul told them that, you know, basically this will be the last time you see me, and they fell and they cried, they wept, because they would see him no more. But you know what? He said, I'm not even ready to go bound to Jerusalem. I'm ready to die in Jerusalem. Amen. <clears throat> Glory to God. The will of the Lord be done. So it's not an either-or proposition. What's, that, what's death got to do with it? You've got to understand, you, got, you have power over death. As a believer, you can choose to go or not to go. You can choose to stay or not to stay. And that's your choice. And again, we talk, I talked about this over in um, Winston the other night. It's how big as you want to. If you don't want to stay bad enough, you'll go. I've ministered to people like that. I've tried to minister, I've tried to minister to people. And if they, don't want, if they don't want you to help them, you can't help them. You can give them all the books and tapes in the world. If they won't listen to it and they won't read it, they, you can't help them. Turn right around, take somebody and give them the same materials and tell them to do the same things they do it and get a hold of and get healed. Praise the Lord. Well, so much we had to do with this. But the revelation of who we are in Christ and the faith that we have, praise God, has a lot to do with that. Amen? Amen. Well, glory. Praise God. Let's see if we want to cover anything else before we, we wrap this up. Now, y'all need, need to be bringing sick folk to this meeting. Yeah. Amen? Hallelujah. Go find you some sick folk and drag them over here. We want to lay hands on and get them healed. We ministered to the sick this morning. Give you one scripture along the lines of somebody having something to do with it. Uh, Acts 14 9. Paul was in Lystra, and the Bible says, in the same, and, and Paul preached the gospel. Verse Acts 14 9 says, and, the, and, the, and then there was a man impotent in his feet. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, that's Paul was steadfastly beholding him, perceived he had faith to be healed. There was a certain man in Lystra, impotent in his feet from his mother's womb, the same man that never walked, the same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand up right on thy feet, and he leaped and walked. Now, I had a Bible up here at the top, and it has these little statements kind of, so you can kind of track where you are in, the, in your Bible. <clears throat> you know, Paul preaching in Antioch that Jesus is the Christ, the Gentiles, you know, you know those things at the top of your Bible? One of my Bibles one time said, Paul heals the man in the impotent feet at Lystra. No, he didn't. The man heard Paul preach. Paul perceived he had faith to be healed. All Paul did was say, stand up right on your feet. Paul couldn't have told him that without the man having faith to be healed. See, we have, we have so much to do with this by hearing and, and, and letting faith arise in our heart and then acting on what God ha has for us in, in healing. Amen? Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the giving online button. Thank you and may God richly bless you for your giving.